The history of special education for students with significant intellectual disabilities has dramatically changed over the early 70s to current day. As part of preparing ourselves for instructional alignment, it's important to reflect and review each of these important time periods in special education. We need to determine what practices we have grown from and moved on, and the others that have built the field and still have important implications to the field. In 1975, Congress passed the Education for All Handicapped Children's Act, which is now called IDEA. In order to receive federal funds, states had to develop and implement policies that assure a free, appropriate public education, FAPE, to all children with disabilities. At that time, students with significant intellectual disabilities received instruction based on their developmental age. So for example, a student who is 18 years old may have also been assessed to a function at a three-year, two-month age level. So to plan for instruction, students at that level would receive services using Piaget's developmental model. Think about a student with severe disabilities that you may know. Many of them would be receiving instruction on skills that are not very age appropriate, such as pulling a toy across the floor, finding hidden blocks, or imitating sounds. Not only would these skills being taught not be age appropriate, but students may get stuck on specific skills and not be able to progress on to the next stage. Based on these issues in the field of education, they began to change in the late 1970s to a functional curriculum approach. In 1976, Brown, Nepetsky, and Hamring Nepetsky wrote a document called The Criteria of Ultimate Functioning. This paper has become a seminal piece of literature in the field of special education, promoting the inclusion of persons with severe disabilities to the community. This paper rejects the idea of institutions and demands that all people with disabilities be included and prepared for a world that they need to be a part of. If you're interested in reading this paper, you can find a link to it via the web in the resource list of this module. This area of special education is very important because it formed the basis of all special ed. Unlike the developmental model, the, the use of a functional curriculum is still very important for all individuals with severe disabilities. Functional skills prepare students with disabilities for their home, community, and jobs. Students are taught to be a part of their community to the most independent level possible. Some skills taught within a functional curriculum would be dressing, toileting, community safety skills, purchasing skills, anything that has everyday application. These are timeless. And in the field of special education, we still value these skills because of this. However, when students are only following a functional curriculum and only having optional opportunities for a functional curriculum, um, the opportunities for a full educational experience are lost, such as literacy skills or maybe going past sight word instruction. Did you notice the little addition sign at the top right corner? Social inclusion is not a new model that began in the 1980s. It's an additive model to the functional curriculum. So many positive things came from the functional model that in the 1980s more, than, more was added to it to build students' educational experiences. So based on the philosophy of normalization developed by Wolfensberger in 19 72, students began to gain more opportunities for social inclusion. Social inclusion is based on the assumption that all students must have or should have an opportunity to become full members of their natural community. So for example, a nine-year-old student with a severe disability, social inclusion opportunities with other nine-year-olds would be what would happen, and they would provide peer relationships. While social inclusion provides wonderful social opportunities for students to belong, build communication skills, and make lifelong friendships, students were not being taught academic content in the 1980s, under the social inclusion model, that is. Again, you will see an, an addition sign at the top right corner 
self-determination is an additive model, again, to the functional curriculum and social inclusion. In the 1990s, self-determination began to become a focal point of all education for students with severe disabilities. The field of special education started to recognize that students need to have a stronger influence in their own educational careers. In the 1990s, students became more active members of IEP teams by goal setting, problem solving, and through the focus of person-centered planning. Finally, in the mid-1990s through present time, the field of special education has developed tremendously. Did you notice how this slide has not only one addition symbol, but two in the top right corner? General education access has been additive to the already valued functional curriculum, social inclusion, and self-determination trends. However, it has, it has changed the field as well, so it's an additive plus. In general curriculum access, both social and functional curriculums continue to be very important. Due to recent federal mandates, as well as the overwhelming research to support academic gains in general curriculum content, the field of special education for all students has moved towards a focus on creating access to the general curriculum. In the rest of this module, we will start to talk about how to help our students gain general curriculum access. So now, let's proceed on.